Hi everyone, I'm Alistair Ben and you're watching Expressive Photography. In this week's video, I want to do a couple of things. I want to take a trip down memory lane back to the Gobi Desert, uh, where I had a major creative epiphany back at the beginning of 2017. So it's nearly four years ago now. Um, and I want to take you to a little waterfall very close to home where Anne Christine and I went a couple of days ago and I was just in my element. I was just so excited to be there. The, the photography that I was discovering, I found stimulating. Um, and I want to try and draw on two completely different environments and see how the principles that I uh, kind of developed, I guess, back at the beginning of 2017 and over the next three or four years have kind of influenced where I am now. And I want to tie this in also with the other video that's been published today on the Zen Haggis channel, uh, which I've started now to talk more about personal development. And the subject of that video is it's never too late to change. So I'm tying in this whole concept of change and development into this week's video. And this is something I'm going to do on a regular basis now is tie in you know, almost like the photography side of things and then back it up with more psychology and personal development and creative living type of stuff. So it's going to become a much more full body of work without diluting the photography side. So if we start uh, exploring the Gobi Desert, the person who I was when I went in there uh, in January 2017 was someone who'd become quite jaded uh, with landscape photography. I'd been chasing popularity for probably about seven or eight years. I'd built up a big following on 500px, a big following on Google+, and most of the photography I was doing was very routine, and I could go anywhere and make nice photographs, but it didn't really mean very much to me, and it became a bit soulless, and I was, I was just generally a bit down and a bit depressed about the whole thing. So when I went into the Gobi, that concept of how to make pretty photographs just evaporated because the landscape is just so desolate. It's so huge and you feel so small in it. So what I ended up doing, and this is a story I've told many times before, it's in the Luminosity and Contrast book and it, it kind of permeates through into everything I do both on the channel and in writing articles. I started making photographs like this which are mostly using an 80 to 400 on my Nikon D850 and just isolating tiny bits of landscapes. So looking at some of these photographs, it's very clear that we've, we've got no sense of scale. Uh, we have just light, shape, shadow uh, and geometry and colour. You know, so this is where this whole luminosity, contrast, colour, atmosphere, and geometry, these five triggers, this whole concept developed. Um, and it's more or less shaped my entire creative career since. So I'm very grateful for those trips into the Gobi Desert. But when we take photographs like this, we just have one element, we just have sand. And the thing that always scared me to a certain extent was how was this going to translate in other environments. And again, it's something I've told before. I, I went to Iceland, I went to Florida, and then obviously back to Scotland and started shooting things. And I understood that the, the elements were the same. It was always luminosity, contrast, colour, geometry and atmosphere. And we can use colour as an atmospheric element. We can use mist and rain and shallow depth of field like we talked about last week. There's lots of different ways of doing this. But the, the key to this type of photography is whichever environment you're in, it has a pulse to it. It has its own heartbeat almost. There's a feel to it. And these types of photographs in the Gobi are all about sensuality, uh, mystery, intrigue, uh, tension and release, you know, there's an awful lot of emotion goes into these photographs. And to be honest, they're still some of my favourite photographs and I truly love that. But I live 7,000 miles away from the Gobi Desert and I'm very unlikely to go back. 
so I need to translate the, these experiences into my local environment because I'm surrounded by forests and waterfalls and rivers and uh, nice geology and a bunch of elements that we don't have in the Gobi Desert. All I ever had was sand. Now, some of the motion in these images, this, this one in particular, I always feels looks like a breaking wave. So I'm, I was using static elements to create movement. Uh, and the way the, the geometry and the colors pull your eye through the frame and the way the processing has been done help to create depth, three-dimensionality and kind of increase the power of the metaphor, I suppose. And this other photograph, this is another example where the, it feels like something flowing. You know, it's almost like a glacier flowing around a rock or something like that. Um, so obviously... I had a very fruitful time in the Gobi Desert than the five, six or seven times I was in the Gobi Desert. Um, but I may not go back and therefore I need to step outside of just that simple environment and make photographs in other environments. Now, this is very different. Uh, it's obviously a much busier type of image, but the concepts are the same. Now, as you're going to see in the film that we're going to show you now, the, the area that we're in, this is the tiniest little stream, very high on a mountain, not terribly far from our house. So 10 minute drive and then maybe a 15 minute hike, uh, 15 to 20 minutes up a very, very steep hill to get us up to this. And there's a little hydro scheme. So there's a a dam, a small dam, and it's uh, used for making small amounts of hydroelectric energy. And, but the, as we'd hiked up here, I saw this scene immediately <laughs> where these kilt ripples of rock at the top kind of stream down into the waterfall and then it's surrounded by this other geology. Um, and I felt giddy with excitement at this place. The, the energy I felt, the sound of the water bubbling over these rocks, the, the geometry I felt was very engaging. I felt there was a natural warm to cool transition going on. There was highlights and shadows and contrast. And, you know, this rock in the middle of the frame here with the quartz uh, running through it. It was just an incredible little scene. And I lost myself in this area for about half an hour, just so engaged with it. Now, I'll be honest, when I used to go into the Gobi, we used to go and camp in there for between three or four nights at a time. And by the third day, you were ready to get out of there. It was a very intimidating place. It's a very barren place. It's overstimulating in many ways. You're surrounded by stuff. And you kind of get overloaded with uh, the, the, the intensity of the place. And obviously, you know, it's hard. A lot of the time it's minus 15 or minus 20 Celsius, which is pretty darn cold to be camping out in. Uh, so anyway, this scene here, it encapsulates for me all of the, the same elements of engagement. The luminosity, the brightness of the flowing water, the brightness of the kilt ripples, you know, these these striated, uh, rippled, kilt-like rocks. It's almost like a plaid um, along the top there. The, the geometry. So we've got luminosity, the brightness of the, of the areas. We've got the contrast between the dark. We have um, lots of atmosphere in the flowing water, the texture and the directionality of the flow and that kind of slightly out of focus feel to it as well. Colour in the rocks, we've got the warm rocks, we have cooler rocks um, and obviously the geometry. So we've got all those five elements are working together in a very self-contained little scene. Um, and the thing that's the most important thing for me is that this concept of change. I don't think I could have photographed this scene with passion and engagement five or six years ago because 
it would be, well, where's the pointy mountain? If there wasn't a pointy mountain behind it, I wouldn't want to photograph it. So the fact that I'm happy in these little contained scenes now feels like an evolution on my part in that I can feel totally at one with this environment. The next scene, now this is a little black and white, and again, this was taken at 70 millimeters, so it's kind of zoomed quite in, and it's a one second exposure, and I was playing with various shutter speeds just to see the effect of the texture, and the sun was coming up behind the mountain behind me and spilling over the top of that waterfall. And so we've got some specular highlights, and you know, it's quite a contrasty little scene. I've processed all of these videos, uh, these images, on a video that's on the members channel. So if you want to uh, see those, you need to click on that join button and then there's a monthly subscription that you can pay, which supports us to do our job here. So scenes like this, again, are they're just little engaging elements. And I was just fascinated with the structure of the rocks and the way the water was flowing over the top of everything and the energy and the sounds. And just my life was just contained in a couple of square feet of rock and water and light and energy and sound. This is my reason for making photographs. You know, so in the Zen Haggis video this week, when we talk about change and it's never too late to change, being happy and content as often as possible feels like a much, much better way to live than to be unhappy and discontented most of the time. You know, I, I, I like to get to the end of my day and feel satisfied that I've done something that was worthwhile. Um, and going to these little anonymous streams in the west coast of Scotland feels like a really good use of my time. And I'm a big advocate for those small landscapes, as we saw last week with the out of focus or the depth of field stuff. This final scene was quite interesting to me because you can see the A on the right hand side of the water there. Uh, obviously my name's Alistair and I, I just noticed this thing and thought, oh, that's really weird how the striations of the rock have, I mean, this is a little, I think it's a little quartz intrusion uh, into this rock here. And uh, I think it's schist maybe. Um, but there's this it's weird stuff. I'm sure a geologist will correct me there. But what I liked about this photograph was the similarity of the white water streaking down the left-hand side, mirroring the streaks of the rock on the right-hand side. And we've got this kind of um, parallel, two different elements, a similar uh, flow and directionality to them. And then the A that was kind of signatured into the rock there, I found was just kind of, for me, it was quite humorous. So anyone called Anne, Alison, or uh, Alison, uh, anything like that, then this is a rock for you. If your name doesn't start with an A, then that's maybe not quite so intriguing for you. So images like this, for me, they may not mean anything to anybody else. And I've said this on the channel before, but they meant everything to me. And the problem is, is if we get driven by popularity, if we get driven by uh, this like culture, we're doomed because all we can do is go to the icons uh, or the Gobi Desert. We, we have to go to dramatic places that people are just going to go wow at. Um, it was ironic because on my Insta channel, I was looking at my most popular photographs of the last 12 months. And the first one is an iconic image from Mount Assiniboine. And the second one is an anonymous waterfall that was featured in a video two weeks ago. So in terms of likes, isn't it weird that the second most popular image of the last 12 months is a tiny little anonymous waterfall in the west of Scotland. It's not a very grand and majestic image. So I'd like to hope now that it's clear that luminosity, contrast, colour, atmosphere and geometry, the five things that I hammer on about quite frequently, are evident in every single photograph that we make. Now, our photographs are always going to mean more to us than they are to other people. If we can make photographs that tell stories or inspire people uh, to go out and make their own photographs, then that's a great thing also. 
I'm trying to discourage uh, that uh, seeking glory type photography. But at the same time, I'm very fortunate to have been to many amazing places in the world. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, I've, I've been spoilt, I think. And it's easy now for me to sit in an anonymous landscape, having been to many incredible places. And I've had this discussion with friends is that, well, you know, you've done it. So why can't we go and do it? And it's a totally valid thing to do. But I think the key thing is, it's never too late to change. It's never too late to have your own little epiphanies in the landscape. And if you can find joy and peace and happiness with a camera in your hand out in the landscape, then it's a win. Uh, so hopefully you found this useful and a little trip down memory lane. Please check out the Luminosity and Contrast book and my black and white processing videos. And please take a nip over to the Zen Haggis channel uh, to listen to me talking about and demonstrating the fact that it's never too late to change and we can always do something positive in our lives. Thanks for watching. Have a great week. And there'll be a video coming along on Wednesday where I'll do some processing and maybe do something about this time blending that we've been talking about. Have a great week, everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye.